Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this week I want to talk to you guys about balance and specifically what happens more so post impact and into the finish. Now a lot of people ask me why it even matters to worry about your finish, but in my opinion the finish gives you a lot of evidence as to what you've done prior to you hitting it and throughout your swing in general. And I see all too often when people come in to see me, uh, when they hit some golf balls, um, they're falling forward or they're falling to the side and they're just not sure as to why that's happening. So in this video, I just want to explain why it may be happening to you and give you some drills that you can work on to give you a better feel as to how you can hold your pose better. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. Okay, so just to start things off, uh, I'm just going to explain kind of one main point from the front view. And, and then it's thrown the side of you afterwards. But since we're talking about the finish specifically, um, when, when a player comes in and they hit the golf ball, what I'm seeing, I so say, yeah, they have this tendency to kind of fall forward uh, more so towards the target. Now, whenever that happens, I want everyone or the, the player to kind of be aware, again, as to where their upper body center is versus where their lower body center is. Okay, so that's kind of where the buttons of the shirt are. Um, or where the belt is approximately. Whenever a player falls forward, it usually means that their upper body center is more in front of their lower body center as their weight kind of moves into the lead side. So if your weight moves into your lead side and your upper body center stays ahead of your lower body, then you're gonna have a tendency to wanna to fall forward just because there's just more, more weight kind of ahead of your feet, basically. The way to counter that is that as your weight goes into your lead side, you have to make sure that your lower body kind of leads slightly and that your upper body stays a little bit more so kind of behind the center of your hip, okay? So that way it'll almost be like you're counterbalancing Okay, so instead of upper body in front of the hip, you want to make sure that your hip kind of continues to tuck under you and, and forward, and your upper body stays um, kind of more so on top of each other still, or just maybe slightly behind um, your lower body center. That way you'll, you'll be able to kind of counterbalance the fact that you have all your weight going into your lead side. Okay, and you'll, you'll be able to hold balance like this. Now, if you wanted to attach a specific term to this movement, um, it'd be extension or flexion, okay? So a player who, bend, uh, who falls forward, um, they'll tend to be more in a, a, a flexed forward position, okay? Just because that'll mean that their upper body is in front of their hip or lower body. And a player that demonstrates better balance will tend to have a little bit more extension. So you can see that their, their belt would point up higher, their hips are tucked more forward, and also their chest um, is also pointed a bit more um, high as well. Now, the second issue that I can show you from the face on um, would be more so the opposite problem. So instead of a player kind of falling forward, um, there's players that actually fall kind of backwards um, into their trail foot, okay? And, and, and the cause of that issue is just very much the opposite, okay? So if your upper body center um, is kind of getting ahead of your lower body center uh, when a player falls forward, then when a player falls backward, <clears throat> their upper body center is like too far behind their lower body center. So if you were a golfer that came in to see me and, and I would see you kind of do one of these two things, then, then right away I know that you struggle controlling kind of where those centers are and, and how to kind of distribute your weight correctly. So learning to finish with more balance can help you coordinate these centers better so that you can control your low point and have better ball striking. Okay, so for this drill, um, uh, I think this is a really great one just to get and give you some awareness of where your weight should be distributed and, and how to kind of position those centers correctly um, to kind of hold your balance better. So um, what you're going to need is just a wall. Now I'm just going to draw um, just a straight line up here. Now what you're going to do is you can put your arms across your shoulders and you want to place your lead foot, um, I would say about four or five inches um, kind of away from the wall. Um, and now when you get into your posture and kind of just go straight into your fall through or finish, what you want to be aware of is one, your weight will kind of be more so on the outside of your lead foot, okay? And second, 
is that you want to make sure that your belt buckle okay, is closer to the wall while your chest is just a slightly more away from the wall. Okay, so if you were a player that did fall forward, right, obviously your upper body center is going to be more front in front. So you're going to feel like your upper body kind of um, gets closer to the wall almost at the same time or maybe maybe before your lower body. So um, if you can kind of develop that feeling of your up, your lower body kind of leading and staying a little bit more ahead of your upper body as your weight kind of goes forward, okay, that'll kind of give you um, a gauge of where you should be. Okay, so you can see my belt buckle a little bit closer and my upper body slightly more kind of behind or away from the wall. All right, so that's a good uh, awareness drill. And um, I, even if you are someone that did fall back behind, um, what you want to make sure of is, you, again, just be conscious of where that weighting is in your feet. Um, you want to make sure your weight is on the outside of your lead heel. Um, and then you want to make sure that your upper body is not really far away from the wall either, okay? So you just want it a little bit further away from the wall, not too much. So you should feel really kind of solid on your lead side, right? Obviously, if you're like this, then you'll start to feel more pressure um, kind of on the toes of your trail foot, okay? So if you are also very, very close to being like on top of your lead leg as well, that's another good visual um, of you being kind of, you know, the centers being more on top of each other as well. All right, so give that drill a try. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment, and, and I'll be happy to help you guys. So another reason why a player may lose balance in the golf swing, you can kind of see it from this down-the-line view, but after they strike the golf ball, I either see that they fall over towards their, their front side, kind of towards the golf ball, or after they strike the golf ball, they kind of fall into their heels, kind of backwards like this. So if you do feel like you are a player that does one of these things, then you have to focus on how much you're tilting and also where you're distributing your weight within your feet. So if you are a player that kind of falls kind of forward or kind of more into their, their right side, kind of like this way, then you have to focus on distributing your weight kind of more so into the outer heels of your lead foot as you tilt to the right, okay? So if you're a right-handed player, you're going to be tilting to the right, okay? And in order for you to keep balance as your body is bent this way, you have to keep your weight kind of more into your heels of your lead side. So actually, if I, if I kind of face the camera this way, you may be able to see my feet, but if I were to bend my body kind of to my right side in the finish, if my weight is distributed more so into my toes, then I'm just going to fall forward, okay, or kind of fall into my front side. Just because if my body is bent this way, um, then the majority of my weight or my upper body is going to kind of force me to kind of fall over this way. So if I'm following through and I kind of dig my weight or have my weight more dug into my outside heel of my lead side, then again, I can kind of counterbalance those two movements. And reversely, if you're a player that after they strike the golf ball, kind of fall into their heels like this, then that means you have enough weight kind of into the outside heels of your feet, but you don't have enough side bends or kind of right side bends in the, in the finish to kind of counter um, where your weight is moving. You can kind of perform this little experiment just so you understand what I'm kind of talking about. But you can just stand straight up like this and you can turn into your lead foot. Okay, so at this position here, my, my shoulders are pretty level and you're going to want to feel as though your weight is evenly distributed uh, between your feet um, at this point. Okay, so now for the first part of the experiment, what you want to do is you're going to want to bend your body to the right side without changing where your weight is moving, okay, or your weight is in your feet. So if your weight doesn't move and you continuously bend to the right side, eventually you're going to have this urge to kind of fall over to one side. After trying that, then when you get back into the same position, when you bend to the right, or as you're bending to the right, I want you to displace your weight into more of the heels of your lead foot. Okay, so you can kind of see as I'm bending right, for me to counterbalance or balance myself, my weight has to be going into the lead side or outer lead heel of my foot. So, so after performing that experiment and just giving yourself more awareness, um, what you can do, again, you can just use a wall. So 
Uh, I'm just going to draw just a straight line down from kind of behind me here. But um, you, you're just going to want your butt to just be maybe, you know, an, uh, about two inches or an inch uh, away from the wall. Okay, you want, just want to get in your stance. Now, when you follow through and get, get into this position here, what you want to feel like is like you want to feel like you, the lead side of your hip stays kind of up against the wall as your, your upper body is kind of bent um, to one side. Okay, so that's actually going to give you a good kind of gauge as to where your your lower body should be and where your weight should be. Okay, if you are a player that falls over, you're, you'll feel that like that hip would kind of fall away from the wall. Or kind of, um, there would be some space uh, between your lead hip and the wall. Uh, reversely, if you were falling back the other way, you would feel like your upper body kind of rolls into the left side kind of like this. And your upper body would be kind of almost against the wall um, with your hip. Um, again, if you were doing the position correctly, your lead hip should be staying pretty much against the wall while your upper body or your, your lead shoulder is a little bit more so away from the wall. Okay, and you should feel pretty solid in this position, like you, like you can hold it pretty comfortably. So give, give that drill a try. Leave a comment if you have questions. Thank you so much for watching, guys. So if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss, where you can also inquire about online lessons. Just send me a DM, and I will leave a link to my website in the description box below as well. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.